Class? It would appear that your school is running low on budget, so they picked up some random guy in the wayside to teach you history. Ugh. Well, they locked the door. So I guess while I'm stuck here with you little shits, we might as well get something done, right? My name is Schrothinger, which is German for I don't expect you to know jack shit about history, so I'll try and make this as short and as easy as possible for you. Now, do you know where you left off last time? I think we were, uh... Never mind. Let's start with Austria. The hell is that? Oh, I'm glad you asked. Austria is that little shit that always starts to cackle whenever someone blames Germany for Hitler. Or World War One. That little guy was no way so small and insignificant though. In fact, it was once one of the greatest empires of Europe. But I guess you win some, you lose some. Ain't that right, Great Britain? Anyway, our story begins at around 1200 AD. Why so late? Okay, first off, we're not getting anywhere if you keep interrupting your teacher. Secondly, the centuries before that were pretty much just the Romans noticing. Dude, there's people in the hills! Then conquering the shit out of that land just to get run over by barbarians, who in turn got run over by other barbarians pretending to be Romans. No, Austria first appears as a cute little duchy in the Holy Roman Empire in 1156, gradually blobbing out of its neighboring duchies until eventually having enough influence to become emperor themselves. A title to which they will hold on to until the end of the HRE in the early 19th century. That's a long ass time. Damn right that is. They managed to do that using something that I like to call the we can't war everyone so we're just going to marry everyone of importance policy. Resulting in the bloodline of the Habsburgers, the great royal family of Austria being all over the goddamn place. There were Spanish Habsburgers, Burgundian Habsburgers, Habsburgers from the Netherlands, Hungary, Italy. Look, this is how incest happens. When you have so many bloody relatives that you can't even say which one's which and just roll with it. Anyway, through these family ties, Austria was pretty damn close to forming some kind of universal monarchy which would have secured their power over the HRE and most of Europe once and for all. And it would have worked if it wasn't for the Ottomans banging at Vienna's back door in 1529. And while that little neighbor dispute between the two most powerful nations in Europe at the time raged on for roughly 200 years, other nations had the possibility of reforming themselves so that they could stand on their own against Austria, which was still busy defending the empire. One particular contestant became the newly found Prussia, which eventually became the great counterpart in the HRE. So after defeating the Ottomans, the King of Austria victoriously turned around at some point in the early 18th century and said, Oh balls, what happened to my empire? Fuck! Brandenburg got huge! And the hell happened to Bohemia? Oh, we ate it. But France looks slightly angrier than usual. What the fuck, Spanish Habsburgers are gone too? What happened to our bloodline? Nearly went extinct! How the hell did that happen? Now what do you mean we still have no legal heir? But you know what? Fuck it. Women can become ruler now. Sir, you don't even have a daughter. Shut up, you'll see! And thus Maria Theresia claimed the Austrian throne in 1740. So you're just gonna throw names at us and expect us to remember them? Of course! Look, I'm trying to make this easier for you lot, but I can't talk my way around the more important people in history, not without losing consistency anyway. It wasn't surprising that the other rulers of the HRE weren't too happy with the fact that the woman was now head of the empire. Most importantly, Friedrich II of Prussia decided that he is having none of that and declared war over the succession on the throne. Well, admittedly, all he wanted was Silesia, but the first reason was more something the other monarchs could get behind. Soon this war stretched over all of Europe and after eight years it pretty much ended on a draw and Maria kept the emperor title. Well, technically her husband became emperor, but you know how it is. Well, that was pointless. Not so much for Prussia, though. They got to keep Silesia and thus were now officially one of the big guys in Europe. The following years, Prussia and Austria repeatedly smashed their heads into each other without getting really anywhere. Enlightened absolutism was doing its thing in Europe, so at least socially things began to move. Poland got split between Prussia and Russia. Twice. That happens. Maria thought she might as well join the fun and get some land as well. Wasn't much else to do anyway. Skip to the French Revolution. Austria was pretty much the only nation who wanted to see this revolution to stop immediately, given the fact that the French Queen was part of the Austrian family. That was reasonable, I guess. Austria failed spectacularly, though, and Napoleon proceeded to kick both Austria and Prussia so hard they had to readjust their teeth. I.e. reform everything there was to be reformed, including military, economy, and most importantly, socially things, like free education and stuff. Franz II crowned himself Emperor of Austria to be of equal height to Emperor Napoleon, which honestly shouldn't have been much of an issue. In return, however, France was forced to put down the crown of the HRE, which from that point on ceased to exist. 
As Napoleon was gone for good, the great powers of Europe built up some kind of loose alliance against anything revolutionary, which also meant that pretty much anything they built up during the Napoleonic Wars had become something restricted in the sense of, okay guys, you'll get to keep your universities, but we are going to dictate what you are going to learn there, which is fuck all. What did you say? Democracy? Never heard of it. Now, would you be so kind and apply that duct tape on your mouth? Thank you very much. But besides all censorship, especially in the German Federation, the new HRE substitute, the damage was already done. The year is 1848. This time the German Federation is close to become one. I'm cutting this short. Oh, I would love to just ramble on about that time period. I'm sorry. One democratic nation. Anyway, the people couldn't quite agree on whether it was going to be a unified Reich with or without Austria, which over the years has grown out of Germany, as the historians would put it. In fact, Austria back in 1848 did not only include German lands, but also Hungary, most of the Balkans and some of Italy, so that at last they decided Austria would not become part of Germany. Which didn't matter after all, because both the Prussian king and the Austrian emperor went back after blacking out for a while and managed to put down the revolts. So that was all pointless. Aha! So you would think, but it left some important marks. First of all, it became clear that the German nation is only going to happen if someone higher up forms it by force, which is what happens not even 25 years after that. Then there's the fact that Austria as it was would never be part of said German state. Also, the Hungarians became a bit more cocky and were only to hold in the empire when they were treated as equals. Thus, Austro-Hungary was born, a state with two emperors, one Hungarian emperor and one more emperable emperor of Austria. Honestly, how that abomination managed to survive the next 70 years is beyond me. And then Prussia slash Bismarck formed Germany in 1871, on the tears of the Austrians. Not because they at last got kicked out of Germany, but more because they landed face forward in the Balkans and realized that this is a mess that they are not going to be able to fix, ever. And even though Germany and Austro-Hungary became some kind of best buddies after that, the Balkans will prove to be a burning bag of shit that even combined efforts will not be able to put out. And what happens after that should be known. Both Russia and Germany get some complete idiots as monarchs. Bismarck gets fired and then kicks the bucket. Suddenly everyone hates Germany except of Austria who got some kind of do whatever the fuck you want I'm in bro oath from Germany. Some Serbians or Bosnians or whatever I should classify them as shoot the Austrian prince and suddenly all of Europe is on fire. Austro-Hungary and Germany lost the war. Austria was reduced to what land it's got left today. Also both weren't allowed to unify. Now listen boys and girls, here's where the fun starts. Because what happened after that is one of these insane stories that make history nerds like me bust a nut. I'll try to boil it down for you. So Austria, much like Germany, was forced to become a republic, which was neat and all, but such a huge change doesn't really lead anywhere where no one has a fucking clue about how democracy works. The Allies didn't give any help, they only said just do it for fuck's sake. Germany had it a bit easier in that respect, as Prussia had some kind of let's call it pseudo-parliament already established under Bismarck, even though it didn't have any influence whatsoever. But that also meant that the Weimar Republic had some some people like Ebert or Stresemann which were actually capable of leading a democracy while the Austrians had no one. Now Austro-Hungary actually had a similar pseudo-parliament already established even earlier but due to cultural differences they were even more useless and of course a lot of capable politicians left after the end of World War One to form their own national parliaments, like in Czechoslovakia for example. That and the economic situation during the 20s led to the politicians being more than just busy trying to fix the shambles the Habsburgers have left behind. The police was absolutely overstrained as well, as radical communists and the NSDAP started protesting and rioting on a larger scale. At some point, people actually didn't want to leave their houses, not just because of the fascists, but rather because there might have been a chance to get caught up in a demonstration and then shot at by stressed out policemen. That happened. Apparently the government gave the order to that in a sudden rush of shit to the brain. Hundreds died. But wait, there's more! While Germany voted itself out of democracy, Engelbert Dollfuss, a conservative democrat and at the time chancellor, kind of slipped and accidentally dissolved the parliament. Well, he'll go on and say the parliament had dissolved itself, that cheeky bastard. The point is, it made him alone the leader of Austria. Screams by the people to restore the parliament were just shrugged off by President Miklos, basically saying, the hell do I know? And after a short civil war, Dolfus, now officially dictator, began to restructure the country in a kind of fascist but not quite Nazi way in hope it would stay independent from Germany. Well, we'll never know his true motives because he himself would eventually be murdered during a fair Nazi coup d'etat in 1934. Austria, finding itself under more and more pressure by Hitler, got Anschluss four years later. Then World War II happened. Yeah. Still with me? After the war, Austria was split between the Allies, much like Germany. They managed to reinstall the country in 1954, once again as Republic, once again not allowed to join together with Germany as one country. 
Not that we would want to, I guess both the Germans and the Austrians are pretty much fed up with that idea. Even the Soviets agreed to hand over their control zone, unlike in Germany, most likely because they didn't give much of a shit about Austria, which pretty much settled the tone for anything that was to come. Austria nowadays is really nothing but a footnote in international politics. The only time they can feel important now is when the season for winter sports is coming. Really, that's like the only thing they have left. Well, that and the refugee crisis. So aren't there any rivalries or stuff? Well, that's a stupid question. Well, kid, rivalries in modern Europe are more like something people express during international football matches. But if you really want to know, to us Germans, Austria is a country where we can go on vacation without the annoying side effect of people not speaking our language. The Balkans think of Austria as some kind of fossilized empire that doesn't do shit anymore. The French always had some kind of love-hate relationship to Austria, much like the French and the English, and the French and the Dutch, or the French and the Bavarians, or the French and any kind of Germans, really. It would appear, though, as if France has finally hit puberty and now is most of the time busy arguing with itself, so that the only ones left are the former Ottomans. Yes, Turkey and Austria from time to time just like to stare at each other when no one else is looking, in memory of the good old days. Only that both of them have gotten quite old and are staring at each other from really, really far away. That's all? Great. Is this going to be on the test? No idea what you mean. No, honestly, they didn't even give me a schedule. So all that was absolutely useless? Well, if you're asking me like that... Yes! Haha! -ha! Later, suckers!